Hello and welcome to Health Fit, the healthy lifestyle show. Remember our episode on squats from last season? I hope you do, because today we'll look at another important movement which takes part in our daily routine, deadlifts. Join us for our exercise segment where we'll practice proper deadlift form and take note of some deadlift variations. Then Mika will answer all your questions on healthy eating routines. Then we'll make my favorite protein peanut butter from scratch. And last but not least, we'll end with an awesome interview on protein supplements and why you should or shouldn't take them. Hello and welcome to today's exercise segment. We're currently at the rec center at MTSU where I will be demonstrating proper form for a standard deadlift. It is important to note that deadlifting is actually part of our everyday life. Every time we drop something on the floor and have to bend down, we are actually deadlifting. Deadlifts will strengthen your core, which includes the lower abdominals, the lower back, and the glutes. Furthermore, deadlifts will put an emphasis on the hamstrings and the overall leg development. Also, deadlifts will strengthen the grip of your hands, your arms, and upper body strength. Start with a loaded barbell either on the ground or an elevated surface. For the purpose of the demonstration, I will be using an elevated surface. When deadlifting, you may use either an overhand grip or an overhand underhand grip. The overhand underhand grip is preferred especially for heavy deadlifts as it provides a stronger grip. Once your arms are placed on the barbell, Make sure your stance is even and stable and proceed to lift the barbell. If needed, step back. The legs should be on the inside of the arms. Inhaling, go ahead and descend towards the ground, allowing the weight of the barbell to pull you down and maintaining a straight posture. This is a hip hinge movement, therefore lead with the hips and as you lower, also bend the knees. Your head should be facing forward. Exhale as you come back up to your starting position. Keep the body tight and the back straight at all times in order to prevent injury. Similarly to a standard deadlift, start by lifting the weight with a grounded even stance and an overhand underhand grip. Again, the legs should be on the inside of the arms. This time though, as you inhale and descend, don't bend the knees as much and allow the movement to be strictly in your hips. This time we will start from the ground. The sumo deadlift requires a wide stance, almost as wide as your legs will go. You will notice that this time the arms are inside the legs. Make sure the shins are close to the barbell. The back is less likely to become rounded with this variation, but still be conscious of your posture and keep the core tight. That's all for today, folks, with our exercise segment. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching our deadlifting variations. I hope that you found those useful. And of course, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us at our Facebook page. Hey guys, and welcome to the Health Fit Kitchen. Here with me today is Parker Smythe. You might remember Parker from our very first season where he talked all about his bodybuilding journey and what it is like to be a novice competitor. We welcome Parker back to share with us his favorite bulking smoothie. So, how are you, Parker? I am so good, and I'm so excited to be back on just to spread spread the, my knowledge to everyone that I can reach. So. Thank you, Parker. We're excited to have you as well. Yes. So, tell us a little bit of what we'll be making today. Ooh. So this is a bulking smoothie, and okay. I'm not cutting for a bodybuilding show right now. I'm bulking because yes. I'm getting ready for my next bodybuilding show. So I'm trying to put on as much weight as possible, mainly muscle, but some fat mm -hmm. due to the amount of calories I'll be eating. But yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit actually about bulking. What is bulking? Ooh, bulking is where you're eating an excessive amount of calories, mm -hmm. so you can gain a surplus of calories, so you can gain more muscle and okay. additional fat, but you need to keep uh, these calories healthy so you're not gaining too much fat and your body can utilize the calories you're using so high proteins uh, good carbohydrates and not you know um, 
terrible fats, like <laughs> cakes and everything. But today, <laughs> we have some special ingredients. We do have some special ingredients. We have Oreos here, and we don't usually have Oreos. I do not let that happen. Oreos was my choice. <laughs> Oreos was my choice. Yes, yes, it was. But it's okay. It's okay because we are doing something a little different today. So. Previously, you've mentioned to me, um, you said a dirty bulk and a clean yes. bulk. What is the difference between those, okay. those two? So a dirty bulk is really fun, but I'll explain clean bulk first. So clean is more like you're eating what you're going to be eating to lose weight, but you're eating an excessive amount of that. So you're eating very yeah. clean. So you're eating chicken, you know, rice, broccoli, you got your oatmeal, you got your egg whites, but you're just eating Pee a fit. little bit PB <laughs> fit, but you're just eating a little bit more. Uh, so you can get that uh, surplus of calories. Okay, okay, but and the, a dirty the dirty one. bulking. Uh, so when I say dirty bulking, do not go overboard because if you do, uh, you'll gain a lot of weight, bad, bad, like bad fat, very fast. When I say dirty bulking, I mean occasionally hit those cheap meals. You know, you can add a slice of pizza, you can eat ice cream mm -hmm. because you're trying to get a surplus of calories, but don't go overboard. Not a whole pizza, just a slice. <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> maybe two, maybe two. Okay, perfect. So how about let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna watch patiently, see what you're gonna do, yes. work your magic, and then I can't wait to try yes. it. So I uh, eat more than the average. So if I put a lot of ingredients in here, that's just because I, I'm very hungry right now. So we're gonna put the banana, we're gonna, we're gonna split this uh, protein shake up into three sections. So you got your fats, you got your carbs, and you got your proteins. Okay. So first we're putting in the uh, carbs right now. Mm -hmm. And the carbs are good for a medium to longer term energy source. Uh, and that's gonna be good right after your workout to help uh, you know fuel your muscles and as well as give you more energy throughout the day. So nice. we're gonna do a half a cup of oatmeal and a whole banana. And um, those are the carbs. So Perfect. your fats are gonna come from your peanut butter. Okay. I love peanut butter and I'll eat it 365 yeah, every day for every meal if I could. So we're gonna be uh, <laughs> doing about two tablespoons. That's probably about three, which looks to me, it's gonna be around three, 300 calories, two, two to 300 calories, which is fine because you're bulking. But just remember, don't eat this snack right before you go to bed because you're gonna, you're gonna, store you're, you're gonna store that as mm -hmm. mostly fat. Eat this right after your workout, you know, so you can utilize those calories. And talking about utilizing calories, the most important calorie to be utilized right after a workout is the protein because this is gonna help your muscles repair right after working out. And grow. And grow. So, we got most of our ingredients. Okay. And we put the ice in there. Whatever protein powder you like. Uh, it can be, you know, it can be a lean one, it can be a mass gainer. It can be it can be vanilla, it can be chocolate, just depending on the flavor of the day. I feel like you. it would make sense to, for it to be a mass gainer though, since this is a um, bulking shake. Oh yeah, but mass gainers are expensive. And you can get a lot of calories from peanut butter if you'd mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put- By the way, this is a dirty shake, so it's okay if we get a little dirty with the <laughs> Oh yeah, I already got it all over my hands, and I wanna eat these so bad. <laughs> so we're gonna do two Oreos, but if you're feeling hungry, particularly I am, I'm gonna do three. So, <laughs> and then the whole milk. Thick milk. So important. This is whole milk, so it's gonna have a lot more calories than skin milk. And- Really uh, pour it in there, because yeah. it's a cup. Ooh. There you go. Looking good. It is a good. Okay, so it up yet. would you like to do the honors? Yes, I'll do the honors. All right, mm, ready? I'm ready. I can already feel the game. It's done. Ooh, yes, I think it's done. It's gonna be a little chunky, but it's I like okay. the I like the shape being a little chunky. Mm. You got it. Let me get Other it. Oh. Up. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a true bulk right there. So, All right. Here we go. That's yours. That's mine. Thank you. We're getting sloppy up in here. Yes, we are. But it's a dirty bulk, so it's fine. <laughs> so can you hold mine? Yes, I can. So are you gonna cream. pretty it up? Yes. Oh my God, he is. This is for fun. I love whipped cream, and if you get the light whipped cream, you can you can you can not eat as much sugar. But this is the heavy whipped cream. It's all fine because we're bulking here. All right, tell me something. Just don't go thing. overboard. Like this. <laughs> and then for beauty, 
what you do is just take this. You, nice. uh, you crush it in there, you crush Ooh. it in there. <laughs> and I'm all about aesthetic looks because I do bodybuilding, so I like my food to look really good and taste good too. My goodness. All right, ready? I'm ready. Cheers. And cheers to you too. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, you You got to keep going, you know. Oh, thank you so much for sharing this recipe with yes. us. So to be here. <laughs> Don't go anywhere because Mika is next and I need to go clean up. <laughs> so good. Hey there, this is Active Updates with Mika Cherfan, and I'm back today to clear up some controversy about nutrition and remind you of the basic food principles that you should be following. In this episode, we're taking a closer look at the food on our plates and answering some common nutrition questions that will help you make the best dietary choices to fuel your active lifestyle. First things first, I'd like you to take a moment to think about the last meal you had. What was it composed of? Did it contain a balance of grains, protein, fruits, veggies, and dairy? Was it a reasonable portion or did it fill you up to the brim? Do you know how each component was prepared and how that could impact its nutrition? Considering these things when you're serving up your next plate can help ensure that you're consuming a variety of good quality food to nourish your body. If you need some guidance when it comes to healthy eating habits, check out choosemyplate.gov. This website will not only help you better understand which foods belong in each group, but it also provides specifics on how much you need depending on your age and gender. Plus, it has tons of additional resources that provide tips for healthy eating on a budget and recipes that you can count on to be both delicious and nutritious. While this website is great for understanding what and how much you should be eating, it still leaves us wondering about other nutrition principles like timing. One aspect of daily nutrition that many people struggle with is breakfast. There's been an ongoing question lately of whether we really need breakfast or not. Many sources say no, because no breakfast means less calories and less calories means weight loss, which is the goal of many Americans. But is there more to it than just calorie balance? The answer is a definitive yes. What many people don't realize when it comes to calorie balance is that extreme calorie restriction does not equate to extreme weight loss, especially when it comes to breakfast. This is true for several reasons. First, less calories in the morning doesn't necessarily mean less calories overall. Many people who don't eat breakfast end up making up for it by eating more calories throughout their other meals, or they end up with late night hunger because their body is still craving the energy that they didn't receive earlier in the day. Secondly, breakfast helps regulate your metabolism. So by putting food in your body earlier in the day, it triggers your metabolic rate to increase in order to break down the nutrients you gave it. When there's no food to break down, however, your body goes into a state of energy conservation rather than rapid fat breakdown like you might imagine. This is because your body does not know when it will have food again, and as a result, it doesn't want to expend its own precious resources too quickly. So while it's true that in desperate conditions, your body will find other sources of energy to use like fat and protein, this process is not something to rely on for weight loss. If the reason you don't eat breakfast is because you don't like breakfast food, well, don't worry. Your body doesn't know the difference between protein from eggs and protein from salmon. It also can't tell if it's getting carbs from hash browns or from rice. So even if you hate traditional breakfast foods, getting nutrients at this time of day is vital for a good dietary routine. And speaking of good routines, if you have trouble eating three balanced meals each day, research shows that consuming five small meals of equivalent nutrients is also acceptable, and possibly even better than the traditional three meal pattern. This is because five small meals, or two meals and three snacks, can help keep you from getting excessively hungry and accidentally overeating at your next meal. By eating breakfast and nutritious snacks throughout the day, you'll probably eliminate late night hunger. But if you do find the thought of food lingering into your bedtime routine, keep in mind that getting your last meal or snack about three hours or so before bed is ideal. Any closer than that and your increased metabolic rate can disrupt the quality of your sleep. If your rumbling tummy is what's keeping you awake at night, practice some self-control by just having something light like a cup of yogurt instead of a full-size meal. In the end, quality, variety, and moderation are the ultimate nutrition principles to implement into your diet. If you can apply these to all your food choices, you will likely have a very balanced eating pattern. Thanks for tuning in today to learn all about nutrition. See you guys next time, and don't forget to stay active.
Hi and welcome back. Next up, we're going to discuss the relation between fitness and protein supplementation. Today's guest is IFA Nutrition Certified, has worked at NutriShop for over two years and is very proactive in his healthy lifestyle. Let's welcome Eric Hudgens. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. Thank you for being with us. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, Eric, let's go ahead and start the interview by you telling us a little bit about your background in fitness and what you do to stay active. Uh, basically, I was kind of your backstory over overweight kid. Um, okay. I remember straight one night I was laying in bed, uh, extremely, extremely having trouble breathing. Okay. Um, um, decided then it was time to do something about it. I uh, started doing some research, uh, just kind of figured out how to get healthy. Of course, you know, the first step's getting into the gym. Mm -hmm. um, started there. Um, I'm big on educating myself. Um, I've done some research on diet, uh, nutrition, um, supplementation, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it sparked a huge interest in me and it was just kind of downhill from there. Um, I managed to get some weight off, um, moved to uh, Tennessee. Uh, then that's where I uh, joined in with NutriShop, and since then it's just kind of been a learning game in a never-changing market. Wow, and you've been there for over two years Over two now. years, over two wow, years. That's a now. long time. <laughs> I bet you, you've got a lot of knowledge. It's, 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 it's like I said, it's an ever-evolving uh, industry, and it's uh, to see some of the science that's evolving now, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. What are, what are some ways that you like to stay active? What's your favorite way? <sighs> I do not have one general way that I choose to stay active okay. uh, over my... Uh, over the weight loss journey and things like that. Uh, I've, I've gotten into bodybuilding. I've competed a little bit. Okay. Uh, I made the switch, got into CrossFit. Everybody says it's a no-no. I enjoy it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a little bit um, of a stigma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but no, it's um, got into Olympic lifting, um, tactical training, things like that. And, and there's just, uh, uh, to keep from getting stagnant, uh, mm -hmm. just, it's just ever-evolving. I have days where I wake up and I want to do certain things. That's what I go do that day. So uh, just it's good to have uh, an arsenal of training so that you don't get stagnant, you don't get Exactly. compliance to a point where you stop making results. Exactly. That is very true. That is very true. So how does protein play into all of that? Why do we need protein in order to become stronger? Uh, protein plays a huge role in everything that we do as far as building new muscle, uh, keeping our metabolisms elevated, um, uh, weight loss, weight gain, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, the diet revolves around protein. Um, there's a there's a concept. There's anabolism, anab anabolism and catabolism. Mm -hmm. um, both are constantly going on in the body. Um, protein actually helps to uh, keep you more on the anabolic side, so that your body is constantly speeding up protein synthesis and digesting and repairing muscle. Where catabolism uh, basically is the opposite. It's the breaking down of exactly. muscle tissues and things like that. So uh, ultimately, what protein does is kind of keep you on the surplus side of the anabolism uh, to keep you from from fighting uh, soreness and things like that that often come along with training. So catabolism, essentially not getting enough protein in our bodies, what can that lead to in um, long term? Uh, long term, there's probably really no long term side effects. Uh, just ideally, you probably won't hit the goals that you're trying mm -hmm. to achieve. Uh, it could stump weight loss. It could stump muscle gain. Uh, you know, there, there's a few different things. That just depending on what you're trying to do, uh, it could, at the end result is just because it causes you not hit your goals. Okay. Can you give me an example of some foods that contain protein, high amounts of protein? Uh, just basically any of your lean meats. Uh, you're looking at fish, chicken, um, your beef. Beefs, you know, mm -hmm. they've, uh, beefs have often gotten a bad rap uh, because of their fat contents and things like that, but they're actually very, very good for you Okay. Uh, in moderation. You know, That's it's kind of one of those things if you're uh, tracking calories and things like that, all comes along with that. So, uh, but just like I said, um, I like that you said in moderation. In moderation. I think that's key. Moderation. I think that's actually key for everything that we do as Absolutely. far as health is concerned. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so talk to me more about protein supplementation. When do we need it? And for example, what, how much protein should an average person intake as far as grams? Um, protein supplementation is going to vary from person to person. There's mm -hmm. no rule of thumb that you can only consume so many grams of protein per sitting. Uh, that is true in a sense. Uh, it's all going to depend on the person's um, overall genetic potential, uh, how much muscle they have. Obviously, a person with more uh, with more skeletal muscle mass mm -hmm. is going to require more protein. Okay. Uh, that being said, um, supplementation is very, very... Um, as far as protein supplementation goes, um, we need it in a sense of it's a timing thing uh, for most people. The post-workout uh, protein shakes and things like that mm -hmm. help kind of get a jump start on the recovery process. Uh, for others, it's more of a diet issue. Um, they can actually use meal replacement supplements and things okay. like that, uh, proteins. Um, 
basically what they do uh, based on the type of protein that you're using. There's one uh, that's suitable for every goal. Um, if you're trying to gain weight, you're gonna want something that's heavier in calories, yes. uh, higher carb content, higher protein content. Um, other than that, you're gonna want a leaner protein, lower carbs. Uh, if you're trying to stay lean or lose weight, obviously, mm -hmm. like I said, you're gonna want the leaner options. Um, based off the type of protein, that's going to determine the digestion rate. Uh, type of protein. So can you actually talk to me more about the different types of protein? And um, how are they different, actually? Basically, what you're looking at is, is a hydrolyzed isolate proteins and things like mm -hmm. that are all going to be your fastest digesting proteins. Basically, they are in their most broken down form at that rate. Mm -hmm. um, you get into uh, whey proteins, uh, all milk-based proteins, uh, whey concentrates, whey isolates, and things like that. Actually goes into egg proteins. Yes. Uh, and then usually into casein proteins, which are also milk-derived, but they are not as so much in a broken down form, which are gonna be slower digesting, uh, ideally consumed at nighttime, uh, things around, uh, around going to bed, so that it basically keeps your metabolism picked up and you're recovering mm -hmm. throughout the night. So do you think that protein supplementation can be abused as in it, too much? It absolutely can. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, regardless of supplementation or not, uh, the body craves whole foods. Uh, yes. There will never be a replacement for whole foods. Uh, protein supplementation is a convenience factor. Okay. Uh, for some people, uh, you know, breakfast isn't an option. So uh, you gotta wake up, you know, you fix your shake, you hit the door. That is ideally where protein comes into play and it's beneficial for the individual. Uh, other than that, it's kind of one of those things that depends on, um, it depends on what your specific needs are. But yes, it can be abused, uh, the uh, digestive tracts and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we need whole food to keep our metabolisms elevated and too many protein shakes and things like that could probably not necessarily be harmful or anything, yeah. but you just might not get the results that you want to see by consuming too much supplementation. Yes, of course, that makes sense. So you said it depends on uh, who you are and what your goals are. So let's take, for instance, just hypothetically speaking, an athlete, a professional athlete, mm -hmm. someone who has more muscle mass and right. needs that energy in order to continue training. So do you think that kind of person will be able to get the needed protein for their body just from food alone without any protein supplementation? Uh, the, the, for somebody who is an athlete who's experienced in this field a little mm -hmm. bit, they tend to know a little bit more about nutrition. Okay. Um, they still tend to use uh, protein supplements just because mm -hmm. of their digestion rates and things like that. It's, it's usually more so uh, around recovery time uh, revolved around your workout at that mm -hmm. point. Um, but as far as, uh, it can always be obtained, obtained through your diet. I okay. mean, uh, that's like I said, that, that's a general, we, you know, we didn't have protein powders, uh, you know, early on. So it's kind of yeah. one of those things that it, it, it is a convenience factor. Convenience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's better than, than the alternative and that's not eating at all. Uh, we've been on this big misconception that it's it's okay to skip meals and things like that. And what that does is slow the metabolism down. So, uh, so a protein supplement can help combat that mm -hmm. so that you're still making progress towards your goal. And it, even though, you know, at the time it may just be a kind of on a whim thing, mm -hmm. a protein shake will always suffice uh, in place of a whole food meal. So with this uh, hypothetical question, we assume that this athlete probably eats everything right. that they probably can. <laughs> uh, how about someone who's maybe a vegetarian or even a vegan? How are they going to get all of their protein they need without any protein supplementation? And is that possible? Uh, it's absolutely possible. Um, they they do. Uh, they actually make uh, plant-based protein powders. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, um, somebody who's vegan who, who consumes only plants. Uh, can ultimately hit their goals. They just require a little bit more tracking and a little bit more planning. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually not, um, as far as vegan goes, uh, I'll say this lightly, uh, it's one of those things that it's not usually a performance lifestyle. It's okay. more of a uh, more of a choice, healthy lifestyle, yes. uh, whether it be a digestion issue, whether it be uh, a, um, a religious issue or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, there's, there's for whatever reason, uh, there are ways to combat it, but you can absolutely hit your goals and maintain your goals if you're willing to do the proper tracking and, and planning. Perfect. Wow. Thank you so much. That is so much information. No thank problem, you for no being problem. here no, with thank us. Thank you so much for having and me. And thank you for joining us today and watching our interview. So, obviously, protein is very important for our bodies. And for more information on protein supplementation, make sure you visit Eric at the Nutri Shop in Murfreesboro, where you will find many options. Also, please follow us on Facebook at The Health Fit Show. I'm Joanna, and we are Health Fit. Stay active.